the identity principle, anything times zero is zero, and anything times one is one. Where? Okay, so first of all, anything times zero is zero is not the identity principle. Again, you've, you've misquoted it. It's that anything times one is itself. So then, are you saying that one times five would be six? Yes. Yeah. Well, what does okay. it say? Okay, so he said yes. So one times five is six. Without any proof, without any context, what what does this mean? And the associate, the, the associative and commutative thing. So you're a <laughs> the associative and commutative thing. Yeah, you mean you mean the associative property and the commutative property, which again apply to abstract algebraic structures, magnetic fields, and which I I can explain right now because I'm pretty sure he's about to misquote it. Commutative property basically says that you can, say you're talking about multiplication. Commutative property says you can multiply two quantities, it doesn't matter the order. So like 4 times 5 is equal to 5 times 4. Or if you want to get general with it, A times B equals B times A. A couple, a few properties that we should know for addition and multiplication. Uh, and sometimes, this is worth noting, sometimes these are what are called the field properties. Because uh, it gets a little more advanced in what a mathematical field is. But so we have the commutative property, which just states that you can switch the order anytime that you are doing addition or doing multiplication. So what that means is if I have a number, if I have a statement like 2 plus 7, I can rewrite that as 7 plus 2, and it means the same thing. Okay, it's same thing for same thing for multiplication. I can do 3 times 9, or I can do 9 times 3. That's what's called the commutative property. We can see it in numbers, and we can see it over here in this table for, for algebra, too. If I have a plus b, I can rewrite it as b plus a. Same thing. Same value. Doesn't, nothing's changed. I can do the same thing with, again, multiplication. I can do a times b. Same thing as b times a. And that's called the commutative property. And that's just going to help us when we're kind of rearranging longer uh, step equations. The associative property... Um, and the associative property is a little bit different. It's when you have a series of one single operation, like, let's say, multiplication. Say, so like, A times B times C. It's the same thing if you multiply A times B, take that result, then multiply by C, versus if you were to multiply B times C, and then take that result, and then multiply it by A. So it just states that if we're, if we're adding three values at the same time, we can either add the first two together and then add the last one, or we can add the last two together and then add the first one to that, and we get the same number. So again, it's done here using parentheses. I can do, if I'm adding 6 plus 8 plus 2, I can think of that as 6 plus 8, the solution to that, added to 2, or I can do it as the solution of 8 plus 2, in parentheses, added to 6. And the same thing goes for multiplying. It's like if you have a chain of the operation, it doesn't matter what order you perform um, that operation in. So that's the associative and commutative properties. They're, they're very important. Uh, let's see what he's got to say about them. Or as he puts it, the associative and commutative thing saying that one times five would be six yes well what does it say in the associate the, the associative and commutative thing so you're if a and b are positive integers it says if a and b are positive integers a is to be added to itself as many times as is indicated by units in b okay wait, wait so that's the definition of multiplication so that's not that has nothing to do with the associative and commutative thing the associative and the commutative property, which again, are not the same property. I think he thinks that they're the same thing. He just says, oh, that associated with commutative thing. Yeah, that, that thing. No, they're, they're two very separate properties. And in fact, you can have groups and, and fields that are associative, but not necessarily commutative. Um, for example, like matrix multiplication. Matrix multiplication is not commutative, as in A times B does not always equal B times A. And not everything's invertible and different stuff like that. So, you know, those of us have studied math. What he's quoting, he, so he's misquoting. He's arguing against something, and again, he's, he's misquoting it. So he doesn't understand what he's even against. 
A and B are positive integers. It says if A and B are positive integers, A is to be added to itself as many times as is indicated by okay. Again, units he's, in he's misquoting here. So That's not you're not proposing an audit. You're proposing like a, a re whole, well, I'm not the first one of the way we, we understand math. math. Well, that's because of the math. The math, the principles in the math are not founded on truth. It's not founded on substance. What? what? If anything, if any subject out there is defined as being completely based on truth, it's mathematics. I used to tell students, you know, math is basically the study of truth. When we were talking about logic. So we're looking at one thing as being true, and this, this other thing is true, and you can you can prove things using, you know, rules of inference and um, logical equivalences and De Morgan's law and things like that. So it's it's basically the study of truth. It's what is true versus what is not true, provably. Whereas math is literally every single thing when you get into like college level math, every single thing is proof. It becomes completely about logical proof and Terrence Howard has demonstrated for all of us that he has no idea what he's doing when it comes to logical proof